understand just why you want to keep me guessing. Hi booktube, it's Missy and today I'm here to share with you guys my May wrap up for 2019. Uh, I'm going to just pick up the books for you. I read all of these books. Yes, I'm so excited. So this uh, review video is going to be a tad long. I will leave timestamps below for every single book that I review so you can skip around if you want or you can watch the whole thing. It's up to you guys. Um, whenever I do reviews, if you're new to my channel, I talk about the book, what I liked about it, and so forth. Um, I never give away endings or major plot points, but I do talk about character development and whether or not there's a love interest and stuff like that. Things that you would typically find on the back of the book in the blurbs or in the front cover, those kinds of things. I'm not going to give away anything that would hinder the reading experience, um, but I don't just share the book and then give you a rating. Now, if you want to know how my ratings are, I do have a video that talks about how I rate my books. And if I can find it, I will leave it in the cards here so you can check that out. Anyways, it's been a while. Hi, how are you? Um, I've been sick. My voice is still a little raspy. And May was a doozy. I cannot wait for summer. Uh, next Tuesday will be my last day of school. And... I am just, I'm so excited because I have lots of books that I would like to read. I would have a lot of sleep that I'd like to catch up on. Uh, it's just been very busy. I've been sick and <sighs> I'm, I'm just, I'm coming back and I need, I, I want to be here and interact with you guys and I have missed you. So uh, thanks for watching this video if you are. Um, the first two books that I want to talk about are um, library books and because I had to return them a few weeks ago I'm going to insert a clip now talking about both Moon Cop and Angelica Angelica Stick? Sticks. Sticks Angelica Folk Hero. So those are two graphic novels that I read at the beginning of the month so here is that clip. So I also read Moon Cop by Tom Gauld. Um, this was an actually really cute graphic novel. It's um, pretty short. I'm just going to show you like a section while I talk about it. Um, this is about a man who works on the moon. The moon has been established as a place that people live and um, just you know, live, shop, do stuff like that. But they've been around for a while now, this community on the moon, and no one really wants to live there. Um, just the ones that thought it would be awesome and super cool. But it's starting to lose uh, favor. So there's just one guy on the moon who's a cop. And there's, there's no crime, there's nothing that goes wrong, and so his day is boring like every day is the same thing he goes in checks crime there's nothing he gets coffee and a donut finishes up his thing and then goes home it's it's the same thing every day um but in the in the book every day uh he starts to realize that less and less people are here on the moon more and more people are leaving and then it's just him and he's he doesn't know what to do after that <laughs> he's kind of bored and he keeps asking for a transfer and uh, the police department on, on Earth is like, hmm, we kind of need you up there still. He's like, but uh, th there's, there's no criminals here. And they're like, yeah, well, we're tr your transfer's been denied. So um, that's it. That, that's the whole story. Uh, it's extremely cute. Like I said, it's about, I don't know, 50 pages maybe. And there's a lot of it is just pictures, hardly any words. But you get the gist. And I felt very sad for him. And um, yeah, I liked it. I give it uh, four or five stars, I think. And then we have this one, which I didn't like so much. This is called Styx Angelica Folk Hero by Michael DeForge. Uh, as you can see, that is exactly what the character looks like in the book. 
it's this girl from Canada and every single page is its own comic strip so it's kind of like um, these were taken out of like a Sunday paper or something but each strip which is each page has like a, a title you know this one says in a very Styx Angelica Christmas um, each each title is called Angelica Styx and basically Angelica something happened to her in her life and she ran away and she's living in the wilderness as I don't know some wilderness person and she wants the animals to love her and so she does her best to talk to the animals befriend the animals um, some animals like her some animals don't and that's basically it that that there's no real reason for this book or this collection of comic strips I want to say uh, I don't really I I can't stand the illustrations like I don't like this weird eyeball thing like you see that blue bird like I hate that blue bird I can't stand it I don't like it I don't like it and like there's this bunny that is in love with Angelica a human and the bunny's always talking to some electric eel I didn't even know they had electric eels in Canada I don't know if this is made up there's a moose who's a, a lawyer. It doesn't make sense. And not in the fun, cute way like Alice in Wonderland. Like this is just weird and I didn't enjoy it. I think I gave this one two stars. I, I, I don't, I don't want to say hate because hate's a strong word. And it, it's not like it's offensive or anything like that. I just, not my thing. I just didn't like it. All right, that's. <laughs> now that we are back, um, May was supposed to be miserable May slash mystery May. So my goal was to read any books that had to do with mystery. I wanted to get some of the mysteries off my shelf that have been sitting there forever and I didn't know whether or not they were going to be good. Miserable meaning that there are um, people on, on Goodreads that said that this book was okay or it wasn't worth the read. And so I wanted to pick those up and kind of go through them. Um, my goal this summer is to pick up a lot of the first books in a series so that way I can start making more room on my shelves. I have come to a point in my life where I no longer want to purchase an entire series at once, especially if I have no idea what it's about and I did that in the past. Um, I started my channel back in 2014 and so I was just buying books left and right. Things that I saw on other people's shelves that I thought looked really good. More mostly like cover buys. Uh, I'm not really into fantasy all that much so I want to get rid of a lot of my fantasy books this summer. Um, so I'll be having a huge summer unhaul and yeah I'm gonna try to focus on reading a lot of the first books in series and see whether I like the first one. If I don't like the first one or it's not something that I'm going to keep on my shelf that I will reread, I'm just going to get rid of the entire series. Life's too short. I have over a thousand books on my shelves and so yeah. But let's get back to what this video is about because I tend to go on tangents a lot so excuse me for that. All right um, so Miserable May, Miserable Mystery May, Regardless, May was my mystery month and I did show you guys what I wanted to read. It was a tentative TBR. I tried to get to a lot of them and I think I succeeded for the most part. I mean, it wasn't too big of a TBR, but I think I, I, I didn't get to like three of the books that I wanted to. Um, I did, however, roll over some books from um, March, April. <clears throat> April. I did roll over a few books from April, so I'm going to start with those one first. Uh, and the first one I want to talk about is Death's Acre. This is inside the legendary forensic lab, The Body Farm, Where the Dead Do Tell Tales. This is by Dr. Bill Bass and John Jefferson with a foreword by Patricia Cornwell. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Patricia Cornwell, she has the Scarpetta series, um, which it's about a medical examiner who 
goes on these um, she works with a detective and they're trying to find out who the killer is she does all of the you know autopsy work while he's the one going out and trying to find the killer but she also has to help him with clues and it's a really cool series it's very long I mean I think there's like 21 books in the series maybe even more and I think I stopped around 11 or 12 um, back in college which I do want to go back and reread them and probably buy them all in mass market because that's what I started off reading was the mass market paperbacks and I have more room on my shelves for tiny books rather than these big ones so if the if the book series is more than five books I don't want to buy them in hardcover or trade paperbacks anymore it just takes up too much room so if it's a a longer series I'm going to start buying them in mass market especially if it's an adult series um but back to this book this is a non-fiction uh dr bill bass is the creator of the body farm it's a, an area outside of a hospital where they conduct experiments with cadavers and you know dead bodies so they will leave them outside and see how it decomposes how rodents will come and uh, you know eat the body how bugs will start to decompose the body how everything works so that way they can take um, information and record it for future generations so when it comes time if there is ever a crime they can link it back to the body farm and say hey well we did an experiment or we did a study on on um, what happens to a body when it's half buried or what happens to a body when it's put in a trunk or what happens to a body when it's submerged in water and that way they have um, a timeline of how long a, b a body decomposes, what happens when the bugs come and start eating away at the corpse, uh, so forth and so on. If you enjoy that kind of information, then you're absolutely going to love this. I gave this a five star. I absolutely love nonfiction, especially when it comes to death, um, ghosts, uh, medical things. Uh, I like the macabre and I was I've always been interested in death I, when I was in high school I wanted to work in a morgue and, and you know it it sounds kind of cheesy kind of goth but I wasn't like that I just find the body itself fascinating so <clears throat> it goes in depth um, Bill Bass started off as a student working for something else and then he was called he was an anthropologist and then he got called to help um, a teacher which made him get hooked onto forensic um, anthropology and then it went on from there uh, I finished this book at the beginning of May so I'm I'm kind of iffy on the heavy <laughs> like exactly where it was like what state he lived in I mean none of that really matters um, in the whole grand scheme of things the important part is the information and it is extremely well written um, he writes it well it says on the back true crime he writes it like like a true crime fiction where I mean but he's you know narrating it and it's also a, a like a a bibliography of an or an autobiography of his life in in the college setting and how he is a professor and how he teaches anthropology and how he works um, on cases and what happens and how he's worked um, a lot of uh, <clears throat> where he had to go to court to describe cases and how he messes up a lot um, but because of the mess ups he's learned to get better at his skill and to uh, really hone in on on what the uh, the case is looking for and not to open his mouth ahead of time to like really make sure that his information is solid before he starts speaking to the press because that will come back to haunt him later on in life so I mean everything about this book was super amazing I absolutely loved it and I think Keely for uh, making me pick this up and read it because it was just fascinating. Uh, the next thing that I read 
in May was uh, Through the Looking Glass. Through the Looking Glass, yes, by Lewis Carroll. That's the second story in the Alice's Adventures in Wonderland uh, series. I've always wanted to read Through the Looking Glass, and I read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland a few years ago, really enjoyed it, and then reread it to my kids back in April, and then decided to do Through the Looking Glass in May. Um, finished it up. The kids enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy it as much as I did Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Um, I gave Alice's Adventures five stars, and I give Through the Looking Glass about 3.5. It's just not as fun to read. Alice goes through the looking glass. I mean, like the the title suggests. And when she gets over there, she meets the red and white queens. And she learns about the chessboard and how the game is played. And she meets Tweedledee and Tweedledum. And that's when um, the flowers are, like, talking to her. But... There's a lot of stuff in there that just was kind of boring that I didn't really care about. Um, for example, I didn't really care for the Humpty Dumpty part or the Jabberwocky story. Um, what else? And like I did, I didn't care for the unicorn story. None of that stuff. It didn't make any sense to me. Um, what's hard is separating the story itself from the Disney version. Because if you've watched the Disney version, I grew up in the Disney version, and you really love that animated cartoon. When you go to read this, you're like, oh, well, these are all my favorite parts of the animated movie, and since these extra characters aren't part of the cartoon. I'm not really interested in it. Does that make sense? So like I said, I give it 3.5 stars. The songs weren't as fun either. Um, but of course, I love Lewis Carroll and I love the original Alice. And I do own a collected works of Lewis Carroll. So I will be eventually going through and reading all of those and, you know, talking about them in future videos. But so far, so Through the Looking Glass was okay. Like I said, I read it to my kids and they enjoyed it for the most part. All right. <clears throat> Next, I picked up two more graphic novels, um, which I borrowed from the library. And those are Saga Volume 8 and Saga Volume 9. Now, because this is a continuation of a series, uh, I can't say too much because that'll give away, like, the plot of the story. Um... But I could tell you kind of like the settings, I guess. So in 8, which I gave a 4 star to, this is set on a different planet, um, which is very strange because it's something that's happening right now uh, in the media. But the beginning says, Welcome to Abortion Town. And that's a huge thing right now in the media is abortion, which... When I looked at this, I was like, ew, I hope this whole thing isn't about abortion because I definitely don't want to read that. Um, but yeah, it's it's different. And all of the characters that we already know about from Volume 7 is in this one. Uh, there's some new monsters that the people have to... Uh, the people as in our main characters have to deal with. Um, the will is back in this one. And, uh, God, that's all I can say. Um, Hazel's a little bit older in this one. And, yeah, I can't say too much. Um, I liked this one more than I liked Seven. Seven, I can't... I th Seven was about the jail. Yeah, I liked this one more than seven. That's all I'm going to say. These these two reviews are going to be super boring because I, I really can't say much. And then Saga Volume 9. Now, this one crushed me. As you can see, there is um, a family. And uh, this one was uh, a lot of a lot of sad times. Lots of bad things happened in this one. I can again I can't say much. Um, I hated the ending and that's it. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. If you have heard about Saga, which is by Fiona Staples and Brian Kavon, um, 
then you know what this is about. If you've never heard about this graphic novel series, it's a sci-fi fantasy set um, in, you know, the way future with two star-crossed lovers. We have the horns, which is Marcus, and we have the wings, which is Alana. Um, Alana, I think the wings was the planet and the horns is the moon. Anyways, their, their two species has been fighting forever. And because of this fight, which I think Volume 9 talks about quite a bit, it goes back into the history of why they're fighting. But they're fighting, and because of the fight, they have the whole universe on different sides. So half the universe is for the wings, the other half is for the horns. Um, everyone in the universe is looking for these two. Again, they're star-crossed lovers. Um, they end up having Hazel, which is a baby that everyone is thinks is an abomination because, of course, these two species aren't supposed to be together. Um, it's traitor and blasphemy and all this other stuff. And so um, it's a sweet story. I love the way they are raising Hazel. I love that the fact that these books are told in Hazel's point of view. Um, it is sad though a lot of bad things happen because both uh, both species are at war. The whole universe is at war and again the whole universe is searching for this couple um, to kill them essentially and uh, this is absolutely an adult graphic novel. I mean, it you find it in the adult section, but it has, um, you know, sexy times in these uh, books, and it's very, very graphic. So if you are a younger audience, um, you might not want to read this. Or for per parents, if you see this cover, uh, your kids shouldn't be reading it because like I said, it's very graphic. All right, with those two out of the way, <clears throat> I wanna talk about these three that I ended up reading over the uh, the Memorial, Memorial? Yes, Memorial weekend, the three day weekend that we had. Um, I didn't have any plans that weekend, and so I just busted these three out. I was very excited to do that. So the first book I finished was Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore by Matthew Sullivan. Now, I gave this book, I believe I gave it four stars. Yeah, four stars. Um, this was one of part of the uh, Miserable Mysteries for May because Goodreads was very split. A lot of people liked it. A lot of people hated it. Um, some said it was very boring or slow. I quite enjoyed it. So what we have here, and I'm going to try to keep it pretty vague uh, because I don't want to give away anything uh, that might, you know, be spoiler territory. So there's this girl named uh, Lydia. And uh, before I get started, if you guys have read A Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield or um, Dark Places by Gillian Flynn, then you might like this book. Um, it's not quite the same as those two books, but if you mushed those two together, it's kind of in the same realm, like a cousin of those books, uh, a distant cousin, not family, like very close relatives. And, and I'll tell you how that works. So this is set in a bookstore. Lydia is b running away from her past. She had a terrible past. Something happened to her when she was little. Uh, her dad made her move. Um, she hated the way her dad treated her growing up. Um, when that huge incident happened when she was little, he changed and not for the good. Um, so she has this animosity towards her father, and she doesn't speak to him anymore. Now, in this book, she's about 30 or so. And she uh, works at this bookstore, and she calls the people that come into the bookstore that just kind of hang out and read book frogs. 
Um, so one of her book frogs uh, kills himself in the bookstore and she's perplexed because he had shown no signs of being upset and she kind of takes it upon herself to uh, figure out why he did what he did. And lo and behold, there are subtle clues to kind of like push her in the right direction. Um, then we have her past and her past starts catching up with her um, throughout the book where then she has to reflect, but that's all I'm going to say about it. So it's about Lydia and it's about Joey, the, the one, the, the boy who uh, kills himself in the bookstore. And that's, that's all I'm going to say. It's, it's slow going. Um, it's not a huge, exciting mystery, uh, but about halfway through, I kind of figured out who our bad guy of the book is. And did we get closure at the end? I don't know. It's a little ambiguous. I think we have closure. Uh, I think Lydia's going to be okay, but I don't know. You have to read the book and find out yourself, depending on what kind of person you are and what your um, perspective is in life. It could go either way. You could say, well, she's doing okay, or I wish the ending was a little bit different. Um, but if you like stories about books or about bookstores or hidden clues, then you'll like this book. Um, there's a little bit, it, like for trigger warnings, uh, there's a little bit of um, verbal abuse uh, amongst a family that's in this book. And I think that's it. Like I said, I gave it four stars. It's definitely rereadable. Um, now that I know what happens, I, I kind of want to go back through and, and see if my opinion changes the beginning. But overall, I really liked it. And then I picked up The Collector by John Fowles. Now, I didn't know anything about this. On the back, it says it's a psychological thriller, which was very hard for me to see when I was reading it. I actually didn't like this book um, until I got to part two because it just seemed like it was dragging forever. And our main character, which I, his name is Fred, I think, but he calls himself Ferdinand. <clears throat> so, uh, basically there's this guy who lives in England somewhere and he's a, a nobody, a loser. He doesn't have any friends. His parents, he doesn't have parents. He's been living with his aunt his whole life. His cousin, which is the aunt's daughter, is a sickly kind of girl. I think she might be in a wheelchair. It doesn't really explain what's wrong with her. I don't know if she had like polio and she can't walk or she was just born with, um, I don't know, with like just sick. And so she never developed properly. But he has resentment towards his cousin. And uh, his aunt is kind of overbearing. And so he just doesn't feel like he fits into the family itself. Um, one day he wins what I took as like the lotto. Like he won a whole bunch of money. And so he doesn't know what to do with it. He's been like kind of giving it to his aunt and his cousin so that like, we can like go on trips or buy whatever they want. And then he decides that he wants to have like this fictional relationship with this art student that he sees that lives in his town, in his city or whatever. And he sees her all the time. And uh, he wants to talk to her, but he's too shy. He doesn't know how to go about doing it. And I think, I don't know if it talks about it in the front, but maybe I won't tell you. I, I, I don't think it matters because it's not really what the book is about. Anyways, um, it's called The Collector because he collects butterflies. But one day he wants to collect this artist girl as well. And so 
with his money, he, he buys a house out in like the country where there's not many um, neighbors and his aunt is away and she'll be away for a while. So he, he like dresses up the house and he builds this room in the, in the cellar and um, thinks about all of the ways that his butterfly could escape. And uh, yeah, and then he goes about collecting his butterfly. Now, it's, this book has no chapters, which drove me crazy. Uh, I did a, I did a rant on how it, 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 I don't like books that don't have chapters. And you'll see that in, tomorrow in my Thursday car rant Thursday uh, video. But yeah, so there's no there's no chapters, and so it's hard for me to know when to stop. Um, but this is a three-part story. So the first part is all in Fred's uh, point of view, uh, but it's very laborious, if that's the right way of saying it. It's just, it's tiresome. You don't really care anymore. But then you get to part two, which is the butterfly. Uh, I really liked her point of view. It, it, it was so spot on. Um, as a female, you, you agree with a lot of the things that she says, which is astonishing because this is written by a man. And to think that, you know, you hear it all the time, oh, men don't know anything about women, or, or uh, there's like some kind of secret that needs to be cracked um, for women because men just don't get us and so forth. But this guy, John Fowles, gets us. And I wonder if his relationship is different because he gets it or if he still treats his, his significant other as, as every other guy. It's like, uh, hello, wake up. That's, that's not what I said. Like, don't jump to conclusions. You know, it's not secret. I'm, I don't have like this code that I'm speaking in. What I'm saying is actually literal. I'm saying no, no, it's not a <laughs> no. Anyways, I'm, I'm on a tangent. So part one's a little boring. It's all about Fred and him building this room and him wanting to collect. And then the second part is all about the butterfly and what she thinks. And then the third part is our conclusion and oh my gosh the third part kind of got super creepy and then it kind of made sense and then you're thinking oh, is this going to be something that happens often i don't know so at first i was thinking when i first picked up the book i was thinking oh there's no way i'm keeping this this is going to be super boring i don't know why it's called a psychological thriller there's no thriller it's it's rambling and then it got to part two and i was like oh yeah this is good i like it i like it i get it i get it um so yeah if you haven't picked this up this came out in 1963 it was first published so it's not as it's not modern you know what i mean so in in this day and age our scare factor needs to be a little bit more heightened to make us really understand what's going on or really enjoy it and uh, i think i think the same way with this thriller because it's slow and and its pace is kind of off you might not get it but once you read the entire thing then you get it and you're like, okay, now I want to go back again and, and like analyze Fred and figure out where I went wrong in his perspective and see how I, I treat it the next time I read it. Does that make sense? So I gave this one another four star. All right. And then the last book that I read during that uh, Memorial Weekend was Deadly Cool by Gemma Halliday. I bought this back in 2014. It's been sitting on my shelf forever. And it has a sequel. And when I first picked this up, I'm like, oh no. This is a YA mystery thriller. It is very 
YA. When I say it's YA, it's very YA. You have the whole drama, high school, cry baby, you know, my boyfriend's cheating on me, yada, 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 yada. Blech. But the main character is so fun. She's so fun. Her friend's name's Sam. I can't remember what her first name is for some reason. Let me look it up super fast because it's not something I would normally say. Hartley. See, it's not a common name. So our main character's name is Hartley. She's going out with this boy. I think his name is, Ch no, not Chase. Chase is the other kid. Oh, uh, Josh. Josh is her boyfriend. <clears throat> so there's Hartley, there's Sam, there's Chase, and then there's Josh. Those are the four main characters of the book. Um, Josh is cheating on Hartley. She finds out. She wants to confront him. And when she reaches his house, uh, there's a dead girl in his room. And the story goes from there. She's like, there's no way. And the cop's trying to figure out who killed this girl. And she's trying to. So she's doing like this whole Scooby-Doo kind of thing. But Hartley and Sam are goody-goody girls. And so the entire book is set in a kind of Scooby-Doo fashion. I mean, they their friend Chase works on the school newspaper. They're all trying to get clues. There's a little bit of danger involved, um, but it was very entertaining. And once I got past the, ugh, my eye rolling of the, you know, high school drama, I really got into it and read it pretty quickly. It was a lot of fun to read and I'm actually going to keep this book. I was planning on getting rid of it, but it was a lot of fun. I gave it 3.5 stars. If you like YA mysteries or YA thrillers, I think you'll enjoy this book. If you're an adult and you normally wouldn't pick the stuff up, it is a very light, quick read. I mean, the, the font is massive. And like I said, there is a sequel. Um, it's called Social Suicide instead of Deadly Cool. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it now because like I said, this was actually really fun to read. And I wasn't expecting who the killer was. So that was a nice twist because I didn't see that coming. And uh, yeah, let me know down below if you've actually read this because this is one of those book outlet buys that I just kind of threw in my cart. Um, a lot of people back in like 2014, 2015 was just throwing anything from book outlet in their cart because everything was so cheap back then. I mean, it's still pretty cheap but the prices raised once they decided that you could get free shipping at $35. So a lot of these books you probably would skip over since they're like $5. Whereas when I bought this way back in the day, it was like $2.99 or $3.99. A lot of the books that I bought back then were under four. So I was just throwing anything that sounded like it was going to be a thriller or a horror in my cart. And this one ended up being a pretty fun read. All right. The last book that I finished in May is Everything's Eventual by Stephen King. This is a short story collection. This was part of the Stephen King 2019 read-along. Um, this was our January pick. I started this back in January like I was supposed to, but for some reason the audiobook only had the first five stories on it. So I had to be tricky and find out if there was any more audiobooks. Now, this book itself, if you do want to listen to it on audio, it is broken up into three or four different audio like sets, but I was able to find all of them on here. And one of them, I think it's Blood and Smoke, is actually read by Stephen King. There's three books on that one, 1408, uh, The Deaths, room and something else. I can't remember what it is, but I'm going to talk about the couple that I actually really, really, really enjoyed. So we have the man in the black suit, which is about a boy who um, his brother passes away uh, at the beginning of the story and he goes fishing alone and he meets this man in the woods that has eyes that are flames and so he believes it's the devil and so the devil tells him something that isn't true and the boy runs home to find out if it is true <clears throat> and uh, 
he's telling us the story as an old man. And he goes, I believe it, that he, the man in the black suit, was the devil. I really enjoyed that story. It's short and I liked it. Um, there's two other ones. There's The Little Sisters of Valeria. This is set in the world of the Dark Tower. Roland is in this story. I really enjoyed that bit um, because it, it kind of goes along with what happened to him. And everything's eventual. Also, it doesn't say it takes place in the Dark Tower, but when you're reading the story, you can tell it's part of the Dark Tower series. Uh, LT Theories of Pets was read by Stephen King. Um, that one was a lot of fun. It's about a man who gives uh, a pet to his wife and his, pe his wife gives a pet to him, but their pets don't like their owners. So it's about a story about that, what your uh, pets think about you when, um, <laughs> when you give them to somebody else. I don't know. I, I liked it. And let's see what else. And then the other one that I want to talk about, because there's so many, I think there were like 14 in this one, is 1408. 1408 is a Stephen King movie that stars Samuel Jackson and John Cusack. And I watched it a long, long time ago. Really enjoyed it. It's about a reporter who writes books about haunted houses, haunted hotels, haunted ships, haunted places that have ghosts in it and he finds out about this dolphin hotel and he wants to see at 1408 where there's been a lot of murder or deaths um, suicides stuff like that and the owner of the hotel is like I'd really rather you didn't um, because this isn't a joke like we really don't ever let anybody stay at this room because it is actually haunted and the writer is thinking you know you're full of crap you know this is there's no way ghosts aren't real shut up just let me have the room and the movie itself is far more superior than the than the um, novella um, I did really like the short story I thought it was a little flat and maybe because I just know the movie more and I was expecting more from it um, but just like in the short story of Shawshank Redemption where when you read it you get a lot more in the movie that's how I feel with 1408 you get a lot more in the movie itself than in the short story and so I enjoyed the movie version more than the short story but definitely worth the read I gave this five stars I enjoyed 90% of these stories. I don't think I could even say I didn't like any of them. I thought they were all pretty good. I think, well, Lunch at Gotham Cafe was just a little boring. It's about a man and a woman who are getting divorced and so, nah. but other than that, everything else was really, really good. I quite enjoyed it. The last thing I want to talk about in this video are my rollovers for May, things that I started that I weren't, wasn't able to finish. Uh, first things first is Needful Things by Stephen King. This is the April pick for the Stephen King 2019 read-along. Uh, this book is a thousand pages and I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Like I told you, I'm listening to all of these on audio, so sometimes I have to wait a week or two for it to be able to renew on overdrive and so I had to do that a couple times for this one plus I wanted to finish everything's eventual so I'm gonna try and catch up this summer I didn't pick up insomnia at all and that was our May pick so if you read insomnia congratulations um, that would be a reread for me I did read that back in college and really enjoyed it um, one of my favorite Stephen King books but I do want to reread that one Anyways, this is also a reread, but this one I didn't remember hardly any of it. So I'm looking forward to the conclusion because we are finally at the bit where everything, like the shit hits the fan kind of thing. Everything's going to start happening. So I'm excited to continue on with that. I did pick up The Alienist by Caleb Carr. Uh, this was not part of my tentative TBR for May, but it was something I was like, thinking about reading and I was able to find the unabridged version in a 
uh, CD version from my library that I borrowed, and it's writ or excuse me, narrated by jo George Guidel. What Guadal? He narrated a bunch of the Dark Tower books, so I'm super excited to be listening to the Alienist with his voice. Um, at first I was like, oh, it sounds like Roland, but now it's it's picking up and it's really good. I'm currently on chapter 18. I'm 173 pages into the book. Uh, this is a TV show on, what is it? I have the thing here, on TNT. Um, I haven't watched it because I like reading the books first before I watch anything in film or on TV. Uh, and according to Goodreads, this is the first in a series. I don't know what the second book is called, but I am loving this so far. So I'm kind of looking forward to finding out the conclusion and see what the second book is, if it's going to have the same characters or not. And yeah, really enjoy this. Let me know down below if you read this one and what you thought of it. Also picked up The Missing Girl by Norma Fox Mazur. This has a lot of girls in it. Um, there's five different sisters. We hear all of their POVs in here and the pedo that's like kind of looking at them. Uh, I'm on page 132. So I'm halfway through the book. Huge font, super short uh, chapters, but it's kind of not hard to read, but it's hard to like like get involved in the story because all the sisters are kind of blah. Um, we have an older sister, Beauty, who's about 17. Um, then she's got Fancy, who has like, I don't know if she has autism or there's some something wrong, not wrong. There's something, uh, she has some kind of um, mental disability. Uh, and then there's Autumn and Mim and another girl. I don't know what the other girl's name is, but she's super sassy and nobody likes her in the family because she's mean. Uh, the mom and dad are on the rocks. It was just, it's just not a very fun story to read. There's nothing happy about this entire book. And the man continues to watch them. And you don't know if he's going to steal the girls or if he's going to hurt them in some way. Uh, but he keeps saying, oh, I... I I was, I was good today. I kept my urges at bay and I just watched. I didn't do anything but watch. And I'm like, ew, God, creepy. Um, so yeah, it says the missing girl. So maybe he only takes one out of all of them. I don't know. Um, like I said, I'm almost done with it. I'm halfway through. I want to finish it just to finish it. And then I'll most definitely will be giving this away. This is not something I would reread. And then I picked up Insanity by Cameron Jace. Uh, I've already read this book. This is a reread for me. I'm reading it to the children because I did read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland in April and then Through the Looking Glass in May? No. I read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland in March. I read Through the Looking Glass in April. So I picked up Insanity in May and the children are really enjoying it. Well, my 14 year old is anyway, because he really remembers the stories and he loves the fact that this one in particular has a lot of the original story. And so I'm gonna tell you guys that as well. If you really like Alice in Wonderland and you're looking for a retelling that is very um, with the original, like a lot of the original is in here, uh, then you're going to like this. It's about a girl named Alice, Pleasance Wonder, <clears throat> and she's 17. She's in an asylum. She was on a school bus that careened into a tree. Everyone on the bus uh, died besides her, and she's in the asylum because everyone thinks that she's the one who crashed the bus and killed all the kids on the bus. Now, Lo Lewis Carroll, back you know, a hundred years ago, uh, was able to lock up all the Wonderland monsters and they're slowly starting to come out of the woodwork. And so Alice and the Professor Carter Pillar are here to save the day. So they have to 
um, get together and save the world from these Wonderland monsters. And each book is a different monster. And this one, it's the Cheshire Cat. Again, really enjoying it. My kids are loving it. I'm almost done. I only have this many pages left. The bad thing about this book, and again, you'll hear all about this in my rant video tomorrow, um, there's no pages in this book. Why? Why wouldn't you tell me what page I'm on so I can record it? <coughs> it's very frustrating for me to go on a Goodreads and then have to count all of the pages every single time I want to update Goodreads because I don't know where I left off. Anyways, that's just my thing. All right, and then lastly, we have The Princess Bride. Yes, we are still reading this. I'm currently in the middle we have if you've seen the movie uh this the movie was based on this book and in the book we've just uh Vicini has just died he lost the battle of wits so that's where we are in the book and yesterday we watched the movie and um my kids love the movie so it's fun reading the book and trying to mimic the actors voices from the movie while I'm reading it challenge. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to finish this book because the next one I'm going to pick up is The Never Ending Story. I do own that one as well. All right, this video is very, very long. Again, timestamps will be down below. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of any of these books, if you have read them already. How have you been? Let me know how, what you are doing down below. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you had a very good reading month in May. Um, I'm extremely excited that I got through 10 books. That's a daunting task and I haven't read that many books in a very long time. So pat on the back for me. That is it. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you soon. Bye!